What's up, guys? Paulie Malinaji for Paulie TV. Chris Eubank Jr. gets revenge on Liam Smith. Tenth round stoppage in Manchester, England at the O Arena. A O Arena. The A O Arena. They changed the name of this arena every few years. I, I, I get confused and I forget. Anyway, I actually was there at the fight. Um, going into the fight, there was probably... Uh, pro people were probably mixed mixed in, in terms of the way they thought this fight was going to go. I really couldn't get a, a gauge on how it was going to go. Um, and a lot of people really didn't. As a matter of fact, the, a lot of the fight talk uh, this week, this week here in, in Manchester was that people didn't think Chris could um, make the adjustments necessary to uh, uh, win in the rematch. It's, it was funny because Chris in the first fight, most people were thinking he was going to win, and people were looking at Liam like he was damaged goods. I I made one point during fight week, and it ended up being true. You know, it ended up that you know Eubank had the advantage in the first fight, and then he got stopped. So I felt like there wasn't a lot of adjustments that need to be made by Eubank Jr. It was just really a mental adjustment. And and would he be okay after being knocked out by Liam? I tell you what, the way the fight started, I felt like Lee, uh, Liam typically has a slow start, which he did. But I also felt Chris Eubank Jr. wasn't that confident early on. He was doing sort of the uh, jab and grab uh, routine style like uh, John Ruiz used to do. It seemed like he was uncomfortable at punching range, so he just wanted to steal a shot and then go in and hold, get it in hold so that Liam couldn't punch back and maybe try to keep the rounds close or maybe even nick the rounds in that way. But it seemed like Liam just couldn't do anything about that. You know, his, Liam wasn't forcing him to work on the inside. He was letting Chris get away with that jab and grab on the inside for a few rounds. And little by little, it seemed like Eubank Jr. got the confidence he needed. You know, that I was I was stressing early in the fight or before the fight that I felt like Liam Smith needs to come out of his normal shell of starting slow because Eubank Jr. may have the doubts early on. And I felt like the way Eubank Jr. was fighting the fight early on, even though he was trying to be smart, it was. He was fighting as in a way where somebody's doubting himself. But little by little, Eubank Jr. started to gain some confidence. He got the knockdown uh, after a few rounds with a nice uppercut. And after that, you could start Eubank Jr. start to feel comfortable at punching range because now he felt like he could beat Smith to the punch. He could start getting off shots, and he was starting to really work well with the jab as well. And from then on, the momentum was just all Eubank Jr. You know, uh, it, Liam never really made an adjustment. I felt like Liam Smith looked a little old. Who knows? He might have looked a little old in the first fight. It's just once he got the knockout, people forgot about it, you know, because he really wasn't doing much in the first fight either, and, and, and Eubank had, had been having a, a lot of success in the first fight too. So it, so it felt like this was a bit of a continuation of that minus the fact that this time Eubank didn't get caught and hurt the way he was in the first fight. Smith seems like a little older, you know, he seems like a guy who, you know, he gets in range. I was watching the fight. He gets in range and he doesn't really get off or he's late getting off. You know, just things that a, a fighter who's a little older and long in the tooth does. Um, you know, he's an ex-world champion. He's a veteran fighter. He stays calm. Even when he was in trouble a couple times in the fight, he stayed calm up against the ropes. Even at the stoppage, as a matter of fact, I didn't feel, he, feel like he got hit with anything crazy clean, but he was not as energetic anymore. You know, he was sort of responding less and less by the time the, the stoppage came, and it seemed like he was getting hurt a little bit uh, as well. Um, he even got knocked down earlier in the fight, obviously, with the uppercut, uh, and he got knocked down late again uh, the, the round previous to the one that he got stopped. So ultimately, I didn't have a crazy problem with the stoppage, but I can see Liam's beef with it because, you know, he wasn't allowing himself to be hit totally clean when he was on the ropes. But at the same time, you got to show the referee that you're responding, you're, 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 you're responsive, and uh, Liam was showing less and less of that. So I think, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the stoppage. Eubank Jr. gets the win, uh, and he got, he got it pretty much going away. As the fight progressed, he, he, he looked better and better. Uh, his confidence started coming back, and Liam Smith really never had an answer in the fight. So that, that begs the question now, you know, where does uh, Liam Smith go from here? Where does Chris Eubank Jr. go from here? Liam, for Liam Smith, is a little bit more complicated. He's a little bit older. He's had a lot of tough fights. I feel like, he's, you know, he's done well in the sport. And uh, the way he looked tonight, it seemed like, you know, he just couldn't get off at all. He looked like an old man. It, it almost seems like you felt like if he would do well in the, in, the, in, the, in the second fight, even if he lost, you could make a third fight. But this, the way this fight played out, I'm not sure a third fight is going to be in the interest of anybody uh, around. So I feel like Smith may have lost his chance to get a, 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 make it a trilogy with just the way he lost tonight. But he looked old. He looked old. He looked very lethargic in the fight. And so uh, I'm not sure. He may, uh, you know, he may take some time off, maybe consider retirement. And, you know, only, only Liam... We'll, uh, we'll know that. As for Chris Eubank Jr., he called out Golovkin in the ring after the fight. I know there's also talk about Conor Ben. Uh, I don't know if the, making the weight is, is the most smart thing to do for Eubank Jr. in a Conor Ben fight where it would be at a catch weight because 
I felt like I feel like the Conor Ben fight at a catch weight would hurt Eubank Jr.'s ability to you know be energetic uh, in the way he'd have to make weight. I'm telling you, he didn't look happy at all all fight week. I was here in Manchester all fight week. He didn't look happy at all all fight week until the day of the weigh-in. The day of the weigh-in, it was like he was like a happy kid in camp. He was like smiling. He was rubbing his hands together. He couldn't wait to fight. He couldn't. It was like. You know, and I've kind of felt those feelings that on the scale of times where you're in a bad mood and the day of the weigh-in, you're in a better mood because you're going to weigh in and then you're finally going to be able to eat. So if, if he was having, if he was, if he was getting this moody, this grouchy, you know, he might have not had the easiest time making weight. So I feel like, uh, if you take off a few more pounds for the Connor Ben catch weight, it could be, could be, make, could complicate things more for, for Eubank Jr. So I actually don't mind the Golovkin fight. Golovkin a little older, a uh, Hall of Fame career, but a little older at this point and maybe has, uh, kind of, gone through his gone through his uh his paces in the u.s he may not be able to attract as much in the u.s but a fight with eubank jr in england would actually be pretty attractive for golovkin i feel like and also eubank jr listen he's pretty good he's got the big name but i don't think he's crazy good you know i mean i'm not quite sure he's gonna be able to win a major world title in his in his career but he's good enough to where him and uh, a fading Golovkin could actually be a pretty good fight. You know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I, I think that's the, the, the way, the, the direction they should go with, with if you're uh, Christy Bank Jr. and his team uh, oh, here uh, in, in, in uh, England uh, with uh, Boxer Promotions at Sky Sports. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys thought of the performance. Let me know what you guys thought of Eubank Jr. and, and, and as far as where he should go from here. And what should uh, Liam Smith go from here? Where should Liam Smith go from here as well? All right, guys, I'm Paulie Malanaji. This is Paulie TV.